Hey guys, welcome to the Daily Word Bible Study, a plain and simple book by book, chapter by chapter, verse by verse study through the entire Bible. We're in the book of our letter or book, how you want to say it, however you want to say it, Ecclesiastes. And we're going to go into chapter two. Now, chapter two, one of the most fascinating books, I mean, chapters uh, that the teacher will expound on, and that is his effort. Now, Solomon, the wisest man, probably at the time, one of the richest men in the earth. And, 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 and I think it's important to understand where Solomon's perspective is. And the reason why is because um, I could think from our perspective of not being rich, right? Like me, in, my, in a sense, it's just middle class. But I can think, okay, man, if I had that, if I had, if you start with that question, if I had, if I had all the money, what would that, how would that profit me if I had all the money? I mentioned last time, you know, the richest man in the world it was worth about $200 billion. If I had that kind of money, it's almost inconceivable. Right? But if I had that kind of money, would I be happy? If I had all that money, um, let's go some more like other lustful stuff. You ever eat something? crave food and then you ate it and then what right the the the, the end comes very quickly right i'm already bored right in other words can you eat your delicacy every day for so so for example if he was on a island deserted island plane crash or boat crash and you're on an island could you eat crab every day about fish every day. Well, you would have no choice, maybe. But you would become tired. You'd, you'd become tired of it. How about this? How about lust? Now, from the times of men, I, we can think about those men, celebrities, right? Who have all the women, all of their fill of the women, right? Uh, but think about this. Why did Hugh Hefner in his lifetime, why did he get married? when he had at his disposal every beautiful woman, every kind of beautiful woman. Well, he had different, every kind of ethnicity. So why wasn't he happy? So, Solomon is going to kind of deal with that. Uh, he's going to deal with that so, uh, oh, all right. Now, I, in chapter one, in the intro, if you remember, I dealt with um, um, I'm gonna compare that. I'm gonna kind of. I may go back to that First Corinthians chapter thirteen. Okay. And I, I, I'm going to tell you why, because in this chapter, uh, the personal pronoun I, myself, my, um, appears some 50, 55 times, depending on what translation you use. And I, and I contrast that because when we go to 1 Corinthians chapter 13, and I will, the same thing. If you remember, I said that that chapter, which is commonly known as the love chapter, that, that, that Paul says, if I give my body to burn, if I have all faith, if I do this, right? Then he said, what does, what does the prophet mean? <laughs> okay. So those personal pronouns appear some 23 times depending on the translation that you use. So I want to, again, the point is to contrast the two different chapters here. 
Solomon, from a standpoint of a man who is the wisest man on earth at this time, by God, he is extremely wealthy. Everything during this time that you could have, he had. People came from all around the world to have an audience with him. In his lifetime, he had over um, a thousand women, wives, say wives and concubines. And I want you to see what he says here. Now, we don't know, by the way, I don't know when this was written, at what point of his life would be written. Solomon had a very interesting, a tragic life, you could say, in the end. And the way that scripture unfolded, so when you read uh, first and, I mean, uh, it, it would be what's first and second Kings, first and, first and second Chronicles. Well, most of first Kings and then for, uh, first Chronicles, where it talks about Solomon's life, the, the bulk of his life. Um, we, we see that towards the end of his life, his heart turned because of his many wives that turned his heart against the Lord. Um, we're, we're not sure if, his, if, his, if he ever came back from that. So when he writes this, we're just not sure. In other words, is he writing this after he comes back to the Lord? If he comes back to the Lord? Or sometime before? Okay, sometime before. So, um, chapter 2, verse 1 says, I said to myself, go ahead, I will test you with pleasure. Enjoy what is good. But it turned out to be futile or empty. In other words, everything that he has, he had, he had the means when you have that kind of money. I can only fantasize about that kind of money. And I do. <laughs> okay, I think, man, right? I mean... If you if you if you're the richest people in life, if, like like a billionaire, right? You pretty much can get anything you want for any price. If they don't have it, build it, make it, right? If I wanted a haircut, barber shop is crowded. Fly in, fly in the barber, right? <laughs> okay. Uh, <laughs> um, but notice he says, "I will test you with pleasure. Enjoy what is good." Now think about that now. All of the pleasures of life, all of the sensual pleasures, the food, you can say, I'm going to go out and enjoy, right? I'm going to go out and enjoy everything I possibly can have. Uh, if I had a billion dollars, right, like Bezos, I could spend a billion dollars on a yacht, how about a jet plane, how about a good, and then, but what happens when you get that? In other words, the toys are good. Uh, and and, I, and I, I, again, I will admit, I would rather be empty with money than to be empty without money, granted. <laughs> but more so, of course, I would rather be in the Lord. Okay, so let's make that clear. So let's look at it again. He said, I said to myself, go ahead, I will test you with pleasures. Now, you remember he says that he sought wisdom. He sought, in fact, let's see here. If I go back, look at chapter 1 again. Just look up here and look at verse 16. He said, I said to myself, look, I have amassed wisdom far beyond all those who were over Jerusalem before me. In my mind, has thoroughly gaps wisdom and knowledge. I applied my mind, my mind to know wisdom and knowledge. And then he says, and madness and folly. I learned this too is the pursuit of wind. Now in the other translation, it says grasping the wind, right? Grasping. So it depends on how you get in the translation. For with much wisdom is much sorrow. As knowledge increase, grief increase. 
I said to myself, go ahead. I will test you with pleasure. Enjoy what is good, but it turned out to be futile. I said about laughter, it is madness. And about pleasure, what does this accomplish? I explored with my mind how to let my body enjoy life with wine and how to grasp folly. My mind still guiding me with wisdom until I can see what is good for people to do under the heaven during the few days of their life, right? In other words, I did it all because I have it all, right? Now you contrast that with, let's say, the lowliest of his slaves or servants in his palace. They, they didn't have this. Well, let me do this. I'm going to go back to 1 Corinthians chapter 13. Now, remember what he just said right here, right? Uh, look at this in verse 2. I said to myself, go ahead. I will test you with pleasure and enjoy what is good. So this is Paul, and I'm making this leap here, but I want us to see this. So this is Paul, 1 Corinthians chapter 13. Uh, First Corinthians chapter 13, if I speak in the tongues of men and of angels, but do not have love, I am a noisy gong or clanging cymbal. And if I have the prophetic powers and understand all mysteries, <coughs> excuse me, and all knowledge, and if I have all faith so I can move mountains and have not love, I am nothing. If I give away all that I have and deliver it up, Deal up my, deliver up my body to be burned and have not love, I gained nothing. Now, what, what is interesting about what Paul is saying here, it's that absolutely nothing wrong with what he said. In fact, remember Jesus told the young rich man, go give all, everything you have away. Right? Now, the, the, that young rich man walked away from Jesus. But notice he said all of these things right here, and which is interesting, the difference between this and what Solomon is saying. Solomon was talking about the pleasures of life. He's talking about good stuff. All of these are good works that Paul is talking about. Every one of these things, in other words, in and of themselves, there's nothing wrong. But he says, but if I do not have love, it doesn't profit me. I gain nothing. Now, remember it again. Look at the words. Look how many times I appear in here. Skip down to verse 8. Love never ends. As for prophecy, it will pass away. They will cease. As for knowledge, it will pass away. For we know in part, prophesy in part, but when that which is perfect is come, the partial will pass away. When I was a child, again, I, when I was a child, I spoke like a child, I thought like a child, I breathed like a child, I became a child. Then when I became a man, I gave up childish ways. For now we see in a mirror dimly, but then face to face. Now I know in part, but then then I shall know fully as I even as I have been fully known. So now faith, hope, love. I'm, I'm, so now faith, hope, and love abides these three. But the greatest of these is love. Now, let's go back to contrasting here. All right. So, I, I, for our purpose, I wanted us to see this here. That here he says, I found everything that I could accomplish, that I could have to test myself. Notice he says, with the pleasures of life. And all of that was, it came out to be empty, folly. I had it. I had it all, he says, but it came out to be folly. Okay, 
folly. Now I'm going to stop here because uh, I'm going to I'll get into he's going to explain this even more. Okay, he's going to explain this even more, but that is interesting perspective that here's Solomon, the richest man the wisest man, I should say, who had ever lived. So as far as we know, the, the wisest man who had ever lived was, was Solomon. The man who could amass everything, get everything. And as I said now, um, from a person who don't have that, right? Uh, I live on a budget, <laughs> okay? And if you think, well, okay, and, and, and let me say this. Remember, Solomon is, 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 is coming at this from a philosophical life. I mean, philosophical point of view. He's not, he's not talking about the sinful nature of man because he, he did all of those things. Notice he said, by being guided by wisdom. Now, the, the human nature... The sinful human nature, which you can't, it, it is only God can explain that. Because again, we can still mess up even with all of, notice, here's Solomon with all of this wisdom. And he still said, I tried to do everything under the sun with wisdom, <laughs> this seeking of pleasure, and it was still empty. That I tried to do all of this under the sun. And it was still fruitful. It was still vanity. So, um, that this wisdom that God has given us should be enough. And of course it's not. Because we're, we're sinful beings. That's another thing, is that we're sinful beings. So, why would a man who has everything, has the inside of everything, and, and let's remember Solomon, who was the wisest man, turned out to, to be the biggest fool. That, that Keep that in mind. He turned out to be the biggest fool. Um, because of his actions, they were the seeds of the split of the kingdom of Israel. When he started going off, he tried to kill a man by the name of Jeroboam. And uh, Jeroboam, uh, for whatever reason, Solomon tried to kill him. <laughs> so he ended up, Jeroboam ended up going to um, um, Egypt. And then afterwards, he came back and... Um, um, after Solomon's death, his son Rehoboam, um, let's see here, uh, I'm trying to find this on, because I'm make sure, uh, oh yeah, so Rehoboam was Solomon's son, so Jeroboam had came back and said, you know, the one who he killed, but Rehoboam had came back, and then uh, he said, look, you treat us right, we'll serve you, but he did, but anyway, all of that was because of Solomon's the sinful nature, but it, the, the idea of you could say we go back to the original question: what what good does wisdom good do, does? Now again, I'm gonna tease this out and say it doesn't do anything if you don't have God. That's that's the kind of answer to that. So here here come to that. All right, guys, don't forget to like and share the video and subscribe to BP the Bible Perspective. And as always, if you have a thought or comment. Add it to the comment section below. All comments are welcome. I'll see you in the next study.